Hey guys, thanks for joining me, and if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hello, peoples. Welcome to Sharp End. So I want to share with you this Moral McGurin. I'm going to do an I'm going to do a teardown and maintenance of this guy, and we're going to see how it was put together. Uh, I have only done an unboxing. I haven't done a review of this, but the review will be coming soon. This is a forty dollar, forty nine dollar knife with a milled titanium clip. All T8 hardware all around. Very nicely done. Peel ply. 14C28N, which is the best steel you can get for under $75 and maybe even under $100. A dual finish blade up here. Slab construction with skeletonized handles. It is a little thick, but the peel ply and everything, it, it feels absolutely fine. Great access to this lock, so... Uh, yeah, and they do have, uh, this is reversible clip too, for those who are lefty. So, uh, this is definitely in the running for knife of the year. I don't know if any other company right now is making budget knives. And I would say a budget knife is anything under $70. Uh, and almost all the budget knives, in fact, that I've been handling are under $60 that, that are contending right now. I don't know if anyone's beating this right now. So let's get to it. Um, first off, I'm going to go ahead and leave the clip on for right hand point, uh, right handed tip up carry, obviously. Uh, I'm going to start here at the pivot. Uh, the pivot is T8 and we've got a locking, um, a locking pivot here. They've got a, like a proprietary custom pin there, which is very nice. Um, oh, well, I know I just broke this. Didn't feel very hard, but I just, you know, just wanted to show you too, this is perfectly centered. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I always do, gonna line up all my bolts in order. Going from this way. That'll be my pivot and moving down. We've got this full backspacer instead of backspacer, instead of uh, barrels. This hardware is very nice. Nice big head, totally milled and inset inside. Very nicely constructed. And now it, uh, unless the, um, unless the clip is attached, this should come off fairly easy at this point. I'm going to use this squeegee tool I got, this do a little prying here. All right, so it's off the back. The back part is off, and now I'm just trying to get this pivot off. I'm going to try pushing it out with my watch bar tool. Push the pivot out. No, not happening. All right, I'm going to pry right here then between the blade and the scale. There we go. That did it. Okay. We can see a little bit of uh, oil in there. That's probably actually from me, not from the factory. Uh, we've also got some oil back here where the backspacer was. Probably doing that just to ensure that if water were to get trapped in there, uh, that it can't get in there because there's a little bit of lubrication uh, in there. Let's take off the blade here so you can see you know they've put a little bit of lubrication here in case so that water wouldn't necessarily get in here and then rust um the this is interesting this is a uh, brass phosphor bronze um insets for the screws and then you've got these nice washers which give it its nice action and then this little pin's going to want to fall out so you got to be careful of that okay so um, this pivot is now wanting to come out, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep the pivot in. There's no need for it to come out. I'm gonna carefully turn it over. Um, it's like the pivot may have pivoted a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take some alcohol and some Q-tips. I'm gonna wash everything off real fast, and then I'm gonna put it back together again and oil it. Um, this is skeletonized, you can see here. The knife is kind of heavy. 
um, but not, not absurdly heavy or anything like that. Um, and uh, actually, so it has a little uh, lanyard tube hole here, and it looks like the G10 was not uh, pushed out all the way. Or is that not a lanyard hole? What What is that? What are you? Are you fish fowl? Oh, okay, so it's just like an extra piece of... Uh... Did we get it out of there? No, not quite yet. I guess where the screw comes in for the... Um... For the clip on the reverse side, there's just a little piece here. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that out while I'm here. There we go. I just didn't get punched out all the way. That's fine though. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean off this steel. This does look like some kind of stainless steel, a cheaper stainless steel, but definitely it looks like some kind of stainless component. I'm gonna clean off this ceramic ball bearing. That definitely looks ceramic. I don't understand how uh, McGurin gets away with this high level of quality of knife for $49. It just, it boggles the mind. I don't know. And I don't know, like the, the 14C28N knife steel, this nice dual tone finish. I mean, that's just such a nice touch, you know? You've got this nice belt finish here and then this tumble here on the blade. I mean, it's... It's just really, really nicely done. How do they do that at this price point? Imagine if this knife had come out even for $49, but like in 2010, 2015 even, people would have been jumping all over themselves, screaming that, uh, that that was just impossible. And uh, And now, you know, the machining and the level of what people are, are, are able to do for the price points that they're doing it at. It's just incredible. And McGurin is stepping up again, game, CGRB, um, you know, and other people, uh, like, uh, Senkut, you know, Senkut Serene. Absolutely love this knife. This is so far, uh, my favorite, uh, budget knife of the year. Um, you know, they just have to step it up. I mean, this is very, very well done, but uh, but it doesn't have a milled clip. Um, so yeah, but there's other things about that knife that that are that are nicer too. Like the aluminum handles is very nice, I think. Uh, although the peel, you know, it's just it's it's give and take, right? Six and one half dozen of the other. What you like and what you don't like. All right, so I've cleaned that off. I'm going to clean this side off. I'm going to take this washer off, clean that off with the alcohol, and then like this. If you're curious about any of the tools that I'm using, in general, I have links down below to all that stuff. You are welcome to use those links. If you do, it does help out the channel. Not that much, but, you know, I do get a little kickback if you were to happen to get something from there. So I definitely appreciate it. Um, no track inside. Uh, so the track is inside of the, the blade, not on the, the, the scales of the knife, but you do see where there is a track being uh, made by the bearings. Um, I try to keep track of the bearings as far as what side is touching the knife and which side is touching the scale, and I try to keep that the same. I'm going to go ahead and use knife pivot loop for this. Uh, but another one I'll also recommend often is Hops number nine. Cheaper, seems to do just as good of a job. Nice little needle nose applicator. Both of those I have links for. And, um, you know, I am not, oh, there it is. So this is my knife pivot lube. So I'm gonna put a little bit on here and not too much, just a drop or two, that's all it needs. And a little bit on the pivot. And then over here on this side, I'm gonna do the same. And put a drop or two in here and uh, then I'm going to move bearing over into the pivot. I'm not going to um, put any oil. I used to put heavy oil inside of where the detent ball used to go. Not going to worry about it. I don't worry about it anymore. I don't think it's necessary or needed. And then I'll put this back on. Um, 
I did clean off the oil that they had. They had a little bit of oil here. I'm not going to worry about that either. I think that it's going to be fine without it. And the detent ball, again, not going to worry about oiling that up. That's just going to be fine the way it is. So now I made sure that I have my spacer in here, or rather my um, backstop pin is in here. I didn't lose it. It's still there. It'll need to fit in here. And then the lock will also have to fit in there. And I'm going to have to do this with a knife fully extended. Put this back over. And might have to wiggle it to get it all to snap in. And, I'll, and I, what I just did there was I had to move the um, liner lock in a little bit to get it to uh, seat down. Okay, it looks like we're all seated correctly. I'm going to now use some Loctite. I'm going to use the uh, light Loctite or medium Loctite. And I'm going to use my bar spacer tool, watch tool to put a little bit of Loctite inside of each one of the threads. Um, a lot of people put their Loctite on the threads of the Torx bolts. Um, and that is absolutely fine. I just like to, you know, like now, now I'm manipulating the bolts, right? And I don't have to worry about the fact that it has Loctite on it. It's in the threads. So, I don't know, I find it easier to, to do it that way. Um, I am going to lock down the pivot until it is locked uh, down, probably more than it needs to be. I'm putting the screws back in order that they came out. And um, then we're going to check the centerness of it. And we will also check for blade play and adjust the pivot accordingly. Okay, so the backs are now nice and tight and the lock is probably, too, the pivot is probably too tight. Yeah, it feels a little tight, uh, perfectly centered. Actually, maybe not too tight. So I'm flicking it a few times. The oil is now working its way around and let's see the action, let's see if it falls. Yeah, it's falling nicely. Might just be a hair too tight, but I'm gonna leave it a hair too tight because um, this is gonna work in and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I don't, uh, the, 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 it's gonna wear in a little bit more um, and it'll just naturally loosen up the more it's used. This Loctite will need 24 hours to dry, so I'm not going to play with it tonight. I'm just going to let the Loctite do its magic and work. Yeah. Very nice. So this is very well made, very well put together. I'll be doing a review of this very soon. Magurin, um, whatever black magic you're doing, please continue to do it. This is setting a new standard for budget knives that I think the rest of the industry will need to follow or they will fall behind. Thanks so much for joining me today at Sharp Ends. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. Uh, you can also join me by becoming a Patreon member or by becoming a channel member here on YouTube. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time on Sharp Ends. Bye-bye now. Have a good one.